Hey friend, I'm Glenn Thomas, and in this video, I just want to talk a little bit about dynamic equalization. Talk about a dynamic equalizer. In this case, as you can see here, I'm working with uh, Tokyo Dawn Records Nova. And this is the standard edition. They have a couple different editions of it as well. Uh, this is the free version. And with the free version, you just get four bands of EQ and then your filters. But let's talk about dynamic EQ. What is it? When would you use it? Why would you want to use it? And the long and short of it is, what is it? Well, if you think about your standard EQ, right? If we just pull up in Ableton here, if we pull up uh, EQ8 maybe, we'll just pull up an EQ8 on this master channel here. And if I bring up this mid range right here, if I play that back then, that mid range band is just static, just staying there. So that boost is happening. Or maybe if I pull out, you know, around 200, That is something that is not moving. So the opposite of that would be a dynamic equalizer. And in this case, this is what my curve looks like, but that doesn't matter. It's, it's more so about what does this sound like and what does it do? We play this and you can see that the line is moving. And hopefully when I toggle this on and off, you'll be able to hear that it brings a different tone. And what are we doing here? Why are these lines moving? Per equalization notch here, each one of these points that you can adjust, and even the wide band, which is kind of the whole scope of the whole thing, you have this threshold that you can turn on. And effectively, you have a compressor per EQ band. So if we band solo here for a moment on maybe this kind of mid range, you can see the arc of the scoop of this mid range. And I can adjust my cue to bring that in. I've got it kind of wide banded here. Uh, but what you get from this, just like a compressor, you have a threshold that you can set for when you're getting compression on this band. You have attack and release times for that band and the ratio as well. And with that, you can really sculpt your sound. So take a listen to this here. And you can just see on this master track here, I just have it ducking a little bit of that uh, mid-range, but I've also boosted the mid-range. So what does that mean? It means I'm, I'm making up, this is kind of my makeup gain for the compression that's happening. So this band of compression specifically, this kind of high peak right here, is gonna be more compressed. It's gonna have less dynamic range. So it will be more consistent through this 600 to 800 Hertz range. It'll be a little bit more consistent. Same thing with the low end. What I've, what you can see here is I've boosted it by 4 dB, but then also with the threshold, I'm pulling back when it really gets loud. So it helps that tone to be more consistent throughout. So we turn off this band solo here, and then I've already mapped a key uh, to, to turn on and off the TDR Nova, both on this master channel, but I've also got it on this, this drum channel that I've got here. I've also got TDR on here, TDR Nova. I always want to call it TDR, but Nova. And I've also got it on this bass track as well. And so what you'll hear is this is the difference between having it on and off. And what you'll notice is I was able to sculpt the sound into more what I was wanting. Take a listen. So this is with Nova on. So this is with dynamic compression happening. This is with dynamic compression happening. Now let's switch it off. And what you'll notice is it's kind of subtle, yes, but it's also fairly distinct. In this case, what it did is it really thickened up the mix. Arguably, it's a little bit cleaner when it is off. And the reason for that is there's a little bit more dynamic range. I haven't pushed these frequencies into compression as hard. So listen again, this is with no dynamic EQ. And then switching on the dynamic EQ. Kind of in that low mid range here on the main, you can hear that we are coming up just a little bit. And what I might do as well is bring this down because that feels a little bit aggressive. And again, we're coming into the middle of a sketch that I'm working on here. You can see just a couple of clips happening here, just getting started on this one. But I wanted to talk about 
this, uh, in this case, dynamic equalizer. Why is this one called a parallel dynamic equalizer? It's because you can mix in some of the dry as well. So if you want uncompressed sound, you can do it right there, which is great. In this case, I'm using it just as a dynamic EQ. There are other manufacturers who make it. This is just a free version. Nova, the standard edition, is free, which is fantastic. I really appreciate that some companies do this so that you can get your foot in the door with some of these tools uh, this way. For a free option, this is an excellent EQ that has compression per EQ band, and it's available to anyone in any DAW, which is a great option for sure. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. And uh, I'm always working to try and just pass along the things that I'm using and that I'm getting good results with as I work on producing music, uh, both for myself and for others. Also, if you're looking for some more tools and a few tips and tricks on getting into mixing or maybe making uh, some music, Jump down in the description below for some free guides, both for mixing and maybe making ambient music, synthesizers, things like that. Jump down in the description below for a link to some free guides on where you can get some more information. And again, that link is down in the description below at my website, glennthomastech.com. Thanks so much for watching, friend, and I will see you on the next one.